Well, hey guys, if you are not aware, Clinique has been in the hot seat this year. Since June of 2021, they have been in a lawsuit in which the plaintiff alleges false advertising because many of their products claim to be oil-free. You'll find this marketing claim on sunscreens, moisturizers, and makeup from Clinique. If you're new here, hi, my name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I am not a lawyer, but in today's video, I'm gonna be going over what exactly oil-free means in skincare and beauty products, why I think the plaintiff has reason to be upset with the oil-free claim, and importantly, why do dermatologists suggest choosing oil-free skincare and personal care products in the first place? Comment below, do you use Clinique? This marketing claim of oil-free is not unique or specific to Clinique. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of brands with products that say oil-free that could fall under the same lawsuit. What exactly is an oil? When you think of oil, you're probably thinking, I don't know, olive oil, cooking oils. Maybe if you're really into skincare, you're thinking mineral oil. The term oil includes hydrocarbons like petrolatum, one of my favorite oils in personal care products, triglycerides, fatty acids. And the term oil refers to a material that is both hydrophobic, meaning it hates water, as well as oleophilic, meaning loves oils. And unlike water, which is just oxygen and two hydrogens, Oil is not one compound. It can be a variety of different compounds within an oil. So you might assume that a product that is labeled oil-free doesn't have any oils in it Yippee! and doesn't contain anything that is water-fearing and oil-loving. Well, that's not technically true. Oil-free is actually a bit of a confusing and misleading marketing claim because it implies that there are no oils, but it's actually pretty difficult to formulate a skincare product beauty product, personal care product that's going to be applied to the skin that doesn't have some oily component. And many important ingredients in skincare products are oily substances. Tocopherol acetate or vitamin E, it is an oily substance that is added to personal care products as an antioxidant to help with ingredient stability and preservation. But you will find tocopherol acetate in products marketed as oil-free including those that came under scrutiny by Clinique, like their Beyond Perfecting Foundation Plus Concealer and their Dramatically Different Moisturizing Gel. Comment below on if you use either of those. I believe the plaintiff is under the impression that oil refer refers to any substance that it is at least partly soluble in a fatty substance. And yeah, you're gonna find things like that in these products. When products are marketed oil-free, probably one of the most common families, sets of ingredients that you're going to find in them is something called silicones. Most commonly that's going to be dimethicone. I've talked about this in a lot of videos on moisturizers, why it's a great ingredient, why I love it. Silicones are kind of an oily substance that like oils are insoluble in water, but unlike oils, they are not oleophilic. It's a very technical difference. Now, some silicones can be made more oil loving by adding the addition of groups called alkyl groups. For example, alkyl dimethicone is partially oil soluble because it has those modifications added. Now, I'm not a cosmetic chemist, but my understanding of how oils are defined in skincare products is that an oil is anything that is water phobic, hydrophobic, and oleophilic or oil loving, so it'll dissolve in oils. And silicones like dimethicone, they don't meet that criteria. So they're kind of a category in and of them themselves. So why do brands market products as oil-free? Confusing, why do they even start with that? Well, for people who have acne prone skin, there has always been this idea that certain oils might aggravate the acne. And I'm gonna get more into that later on in the video. But that is kind of, I believe, where the marketing originated to speak to people who have acne prone skin. And a lot of dermatologists tell their acne prone patients, choose products that are oil free. So I can totally understand why the plaintiff is upset here because you know, as dermatologists, we do frequently recommend oil-free skincare products. Choose oil-free, we'll tell our patients seeking advice on what products to choose. And if the patient has 
oily skin or acne prone skin, that is a go-to recommendation. So imagine you're surprised wherein you leave the dermatologist's office, you go to the Clinique counter, you pick up the dramatically different moisturizing gel and boom, there is actually an oil in there even though the front of the box says oil free. Yeah, you would be pissed off because you are doing something that you think is a medical recommend, you know, that's a medical recommendation basically from your doctor or dermatologist and you've done that and there is actually oil there. So why do brands market products as oil-free when they actually have oils in them? Truthfully, and many have openly admitted this, they bank on the fact that consumers don't actually know the difference. So they use the term oil-free basically to market a product that is more favorable or going to be well tolerated likely by somebody who has an oily skin type maybe more acne prone, but oil free, you know, there's no regulation or oversight. It is a marketing claim. And I wholeheartedly agree that it is misleading because it puts in the consumer's mind that oil, any type of oil and skincare products is what they need to be avoiding. And that's not true at all. And I'll get down into the details of what exactly the benefit of oil free skincare products and personal care products is going to be for people who have oily skin. Why do dermatologists advise patients to choose those products? So when we think about a moisturizer or product that has oil in it, what comes to mind and what is probably our favorite oil in personal care products as dermatologists is going to be the hydrocarbon petrolatum. It has been used since 1837 in personal care products. Contrary to popular belief, it is not comedogenic. Petrolatum is arguably the most important oil in dermatology as an ingredient in moisture moisturizers and moisturizing products because of its ability to reduce trans epidermal water loss. That means water leaving the skin. There is no ingredient that compares to petrolatum in terms of reduction of trans epidermal water loss. It can do it upwards of 99%. No other ingredient, including silicones, can offer that level of reduction of trans epidermal water loss. Why would that be a good thing? Well, for people who have dry skin conditions like eczema, where they have a lot of water being you know, lost from the skin, contributing to their disease, that is a really valuable thing to have in the product to ameliorate those dry skin symptoms. It's very occlusive, hence the reduction in trans epidermal water loss. And because of that, it facilitates healing and skin barrier repair and is incredibly valuable for healing cuts, ulcers, etc. because it provides a barrier and a seal, almost acting like second skin for say you have an abrasion or something so that the new healthy skin cells can migrate in. It keeps the underlying defect moist and hydrated, allowing for better healing. Petrolatum can intercalate between corneocytes or skin cells and mimic your skin's natural lipids temporarily to alleviate dryness and itch. So petrolatum is not a demon ingredient. It's not comedogenic. Why do people think it's comedogenic? Why do people think it's going to break them out? This is one of the biggest myths in the public eye when it comes to skincare ingredients is that petrolatum is pore clogging and will break you out. That is not true. The reason this myth started is that petrolatum is a petrochemical derived ingredient. Now in cosmetic products, it is highly purified and refined, but because it is derived from petrochemicals, if you were not using petrolatum that is highly refined, there could be some risk of contamination with tar, which is comedogenic for sure. But in the cosmetic industry, the cos you know, cosmetic grade petrolatum is so highly refined and purified that this is not an issue. If you live in Houston, if you ever walk by the bayou, you would not ever think of jumping in the bayou and drinking that water. Ew, gross. Now, if that was your whole worldview of what water is, well, yeah, you would probably be like, why are they putting water in my skincare products? Ew, gross. Yeah, I mean, they're using purified, clean water. They're not taking water from the bayou and putting it directly in your skin. Same holds true when we're th talking about petrolatum. So products that have petrolatum cannot be classified as oil-free. Well, why the heck does that matter? Why would, why would petrolatum be something that a dermatologist would suggest avoiding if it's so great for dry skin and healing and all this other stuff? Well, truthfully, petrolatum, it feels very greasy on the skin. For people who have very oily skin, this is not something they enjoy 
having. It makes the skin look greasier, look shinier. And because petrolatum is so occlusive, it actually can slow down the rate of evaporation of sweat and that can make you feel overheated. Some people have a condition called rosacea and they're very prone to getting flushing, especially if they get overheated. So heavy moisturizers can kind of incite that flush and exacerbate their disease. And silicones in personal care products, they're known actually as astringent emollients because they have the ability to reduce the stickiness of petrolatum. Silicones are definitely advantageous over petrolatum for people who have oily, acne-prone skin because they're shine reducing, they don't feel greasy or heavy on the skin, they allow for better evaporation of sweat, they have anti-shine properties, they're astringent emollients, so they're, you know, help your skin feel less greasy overall, they're a better choice. So that is why dermatologists recommend choosing oil-free products for many patients. But it, it becomes a loosey-goosey area too because people out there with dry skin, they're gonna read this oil-free marketing. Maybe they've never been to a dermatologist before and they're gonna have it in their head where I need to avoid oils because they're gonna break me out. And then they may be avoiding things like petrolatum in their skincare products, which actually could end up helping them. Now, what are the downsides of using products with oils in them, namely like petrolatum? Uh, well, they can, again, because they slow down the rate of evaporation of sweat, they can make you overheat, they can feel greasy on the skin, and because they, they tend to be a lot heavier, some people do develop an irritant contact dermatitis to oilier products. That irritant dermatitis looks like acne. It's an irritant folliculitis. But it's not actually because the product is truthfully comedogenic. It's merely an irritant reaction centered around the follicle. So I personally, you know, I think it's best to be clear and correct in how you communicate what your product is intended to do. So customers know, and I don't think brands are going to be able to get away with that. And this individual, this is not the first lawsuit that this individual has made against a brand. Uh, this individual also had a lawsuit against Maybelline and I believe Lancome, if I'm correct. I can see why the plaintiff is upset here. I don't think the brands ever set out to mislead customers intentionally. I merely think the term oil-free has stuck for so long, kind of based on how cosmetic manufacturers define oil and silicones being actually technically silophilic. <laughs> um, and that's kind of a weird thing to market. So I kind of get where that originally came about, the oil-free. And because dermatologists started recommending to their oily, acne-prone patients, hey, choose products that are labeled oil-free as a way to help them navigate that, I can see how it's really stuck and been persistent. But rather than use that term, which I don't think is factually correct, I think it would be better to replace that with more descriptive language as far as the feel of the product to communicate that for people with oily skin, it's gonna feel, feel heavy or greasy, to communicate things like shine reducing. I think that kind of language is much more helpful to consumers versus those products that have petrolatum, you know, being more heavily marketed to those individuals who have dry skin and letting them know that this is something that's going to be helpful for healing and recovery of a damaged skin barrier, more so even than dimethicone. There's no need to fear petrolatum, aka Vaseline, uh, for, for skincare. I mean, it's, it's very valuable and can have tremendous benefit for treating dry skin conditions, as well as healing cuts, scrapes, reducing chafing, Etc. I mean, it is not a devil ingredient, and it is definitely a myth that it is poor clogging. It's definitely a myth that it is some kind of, you know, carcinogenic, contaminated product. I definitely think it is in the best interest of brands to stop using the terminology oil-free, and again, instead use more descriptive terminology that can help the customer understand that their product is going to be better suited for oilier skin types. And I do think that more people will become upset by this as they, you know, we have more access to information from as a public, and you'll likely see even more lawsuits. So I just think it's better to step away from that. All right, y'all. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, comment below. Let me know if you use Clinique products or not. I have worn their makeup in the past and I used to use the dramatically different moisturizer. It didn't lead to dramatically different results, but it wasn't a bad product. I don't use it anymore because moisturizers are, you know, so readily available at a fraction of the price that are just as good, if not a thousand times better. So. 
there's that. But anyways, let me know if you are a Clinique fan. I do think their makeup is actually pretty good. Uh, anyways, I hope this video was fun, informative, you learned something. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.